and liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon. After years of anticipation, it has finally happened. Brace yourself for the awe-inspiring liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, signifying the dawn of a groundbreaking era in spaceflight. As the world watches in wonder, questions arise about how this monumental achievement will impact industry leader SpaceX and the esteemed NASA. Will they face fierce competition? Will this unrivaled collaboration fuel innovation and propulsion technology? Join us as we delve into an orbiter-sized investigation, shedding light on the promising realm that lies beyond. Discover how the United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket catapults humanity towards the stars, forever altering the course of interstellar exploration. Buckle up, space enthusiasts, as we witness the celestial milestone that will leave a celestial mark in history. Will it prompt competition? Take a front row seat as we explore the impact of Vulcan on SpaceX and the queries surrounding NASA's reaction. How will it impact SpaceX, the innovative trailblazer in the race to the stars? And not forgetting, let's dive deep into NASA's reaction to this immense achievement. Hello space lover, the answers to all your questions related to this topic here let's find out everything in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. This accomplishment marks a significant success for ULA, Blue Origin and NASA after nearly a decade of planning, designing, assembly and testing, United Launch Alliance's efforts have reached fruition with the maiden launch of its Vulcan rocket. The inaugural flight of this launch vehicle took place this morning at 2.18 a.m. Eastern from Space Launch Complex 41, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. As the countdown approached L6 hours marking 8 p.m. on Sunday, the launch complex received the green light for clearance. Within an hour, the preparations surged ahead, entering a heightened state of readiness as they initiated the chilling process for the feed lines, gearing up for the imminent tanking procedure. Following the completion of all polls, the entire launch team, including engineering specialists and leadership, unanimously agreed to proceed to the final phase of the countdown. Without any interruptions, the countdown progressed smoothly, and moments before liftoff, the rocket's engines ignited, propelling the vehicle into the dark morning skies of Florida. Within less than two minutes of the flight's commencement, the rocket's two smaller side boosters detached, and the liquid methane and liquid oxygen-fueled rocket emitted a haunting blue glow as it ascended into space. Now here's an impressive detail. Vulcan is loaded with a whopping 454,000 kilograms of propellant, a blend of methane, liquid oxygen, and liquid hydrogen. Once fully fueled, this rocket weighs an impressive 663,367 kilograms. On board, the Vulcan rocket lies the primary payload. Astrobotics Peregrine Lunar Lander, eagerly awaiting its voyage to the moon. This vital cargo was carefully secured atop the rocket within the 15.5-meter-long payload fairing. Crafted by Beyond Gravity back on December 20, Peregrine is all set to embark on its journey to the moon through a translunar injection orbit, while the Centaur 5 upper stage will proceed with Celeste's Memorial Spaceflight's Enterprise flight to orbit around the sun. If everything unfolds as planned, Peregrine is slated for a landing on February 23 in a mid-latitude region of the Moon, known as Sinus Biscacitatus, more famously recognized as the Bay of Stykinus. Making America back to the surface of the Moon for the first time since Apollo is a momentous honor, expressed Astropodics CEO John Thornton ahead of the launch. Until now, achieving a soft landing on Earth's closest celestial body has been a feat accomplished by only a few national space agencies. The Soviet Union claimed the honor of being the first in 1966 followed by the United States, which remains the sole country to have sent humans to the lunar surface. The launch is a big deal in itself. It led to the first successful private moon landing from the United States since NASA's final Apollo mission in 1972. Honestly, Peregrine is one part of a small fleet of such privately developed lunar landers. NASA has funded the development of this fleet to help the United States get on the moon as the new international space race heats up in 2023. We know China has successfully landed three times over the past decade, while India was the most recent to achieve the feat on its second attempt last year. The Peregrine lander is carrying the launch of 20 payloads, including five from NASA's CLPS initiative. The payloads encompass a range of missions, from seeking indications of water ice near the lunar surface to demonstrating a rover swarm. 
Additionally, the lander carries payloads representing humanity through artwork and historical artifacts. Secondly, this CERT-1 mission brings not just a lunar lander, but also ULA's future. This is very important. The CERT-1 mission is Vulcan's first launch and the first of two certification flights the company needs to perform to be approved by the United States Space Force to launch national security payloads. This certification flight is the final step in the development of Vulcan Centaur, said Mark Peller, Vice President of Vulcan Development at ULA. It is also unusually demanding for a debut launch. The rocket must not only reach orbit, but then kick on and execute a translunar injection burn with its Centaur upper stage. The launch is the culmination of a decade of development of Vulcan, intended to replace both ULA's Atlas and Delta launch vehicles. Additionally, the company intends to use Vulcan to establish a greater competitive footing with Elon Musk's SpaceX. In 2006, the Pentagon allowed Lockheed and Boeing to form a joint venture that gave the newly formed company, ULA Monopoly, on all military launch contracts. At the time, the Pentagon was focused on assured access to space, emphasizing reliable rockets that would fly successfully over cost. However, by 2014, ULA wasn't the rocket industry stalwart it had been since its founding almost a decade earlier when it had a monopoly on lucrative Pentagon contracts to lift national security satellites into orbit. The company has since been overtaken by Elon Musk's SpaceX as the top launch provider. Advertising launch prices as low as $67 million to put 22 tons of cargo in low Earth orbit with its Falcon 9 rocket and developing a Starship vehicle that could launch five times more cargo for $2 million or less. SpaceX is making real progress toward its goal of lowering the cost of space travel by a factor of 100. Meanwhile, Atlas V starts at $109 million, whereas the company's other type of rocket, the Delta IV Heavy costs upwards of $350 million a launch, limiting its use to government customers. For that reason, in 2016, ULA CEO Tori Bruno set a goal of building and launching Vulcan Centaur for less than $100 million. On the face of it, that might not seem particularly aspirational. It fails to match, much less beat, the $67 million launch price that SpaceX advertises. On the other hand, getting costs down from $350 million to $100 million would still be a vast improvement. In the context of the United States government's national security launches which usually cost more than commercial launches that ULA specializes in, ULA is confident that $100 million might be good enough to keep ULA competitive with SpaceX. Thirdly, referring to this launch, not only Tori Bruno but also Jeff Bezos is equally excited. As you know, after Russia invaded Crimea in 2014, the United States Congress put pressure on the Russian RD-180 engine used on the Atlas V rocket to be removed. As a result, a pair of BOA's B-4 engines powered by methane fuel was selected for each ULA's new Vulcan rocket to power its booster. When the Vulcan booster sends its Centaur 5 to the sky successfully, BE-4 will be the United States' second methane-fueled staged combustion rocket engine to lift off the ground successfully following SpaceX's Raptor engine. This can be considered a great encouragement for Jeff Bezos when his BE-4 rocket engine continuously encountered problems, delaying Vulcan's first launch. Early updates had Vulcan's debut for 2019 but were quickly delayed to 2020. One of the first items to be marked as a problem was with BE-4. On June 30, 2023, BE-4 exploded while being tested, a destructive setback with potential ramifications for the company's customers and its own rocket, not mentioned to a series of postponements later. Last, but not least, we cannot help to say about Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft which will launch on ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket under the CERT-2. The mission is scheduled to take place in 2024 with an unknown launch date. So, with the success of CERT-1, the company could give an exact date for its first mission. Tom Vice, CEO of Sierra Space said, We're watching the Vulcan very carefully, Vice acknowledged. They've got to get up their first flight of Vulcan, turn the mission data analysis around, and then we're on the second flight. Many opinions say that the success of CERT-1 turns out to be a threat to SpaceX, given that its competitor, ULA, will be much stronger. However, that's not really true. Because at least SpaceX always keeps its trump cards, most notably Starship, although currently under construction, once operational, Starship will be an unbeatable factor in the aerospace industry.
Of course, that's a long way off. Nevertheless, currently, SpaceX still has another one which is the Falcon Heavy rocket. With the payload capacity of 63.8 metric tons to low Earth orbit, each SpaceX Triple Core Falcon Heavy booster can launch twice as much cargo into orbit as the new Vulcan Centaur rocket. Falcon Heavy's cost per launch is also lower than that of Vulcan. Not that enough, SpaceX also plans to ramp up Falcon Heavy launches in 2024 by leasing Space Launch Complex 6 at Vandenberg Space Force Base to compete in national security. Missions Furthermore, Northrop Grumman is supplying an enhanced version of its solid rocket boosters for this mission. The pair of Gem 63 XL engines, in combination with the B-4, will yield just over 2 million pounds of thrust during liftoff. In future Vulcan flights, the potential utilization of up to six engines could yield a maximum thrust of 3.3 million. Comparatively, the thrust varies across different rockets. A Falcon 9 generates about 1.7 million pounds, while a Falcon Heavy boasts 5.1 million pounds. Atlas V achieves 2.3 million pounds in its most robust configuration, and the Delta IV Heavy hits 2.1 million. NASA's SLS impresses with 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, whereas SpaceX's new Starship and Super Heavy collectively produce an estimated 17 million pounds of thrust. Vulcan does provide extremely good value and is very competitive in the marketplace, Keller said. What's unique about Vulcan and what we originally set out to do was to provide a rocket that had all the capabilities of Atlas and Delta in one single system, and we achieved that. Actually, a vehicle that has performance that's even greater than the three-body Delta IV Heavy. Keller emphasized that the system meets the diverse needs of its commercial, civil, and national security space customers, catering to various destinations like low-Earth orbit, geostationary orbit, and even interplanetary missions, such as the CERT-1 flight. We've been able to achieve a vehicle that goes from medium to heavy lift in a single core configuration, he said. We do that by the flexibility to add solid rocket boosters so that it provides heavy lift capability with the single core rocket and providing extreme value for our customers. So, a very flexible rocket that is very competitive in the marketplace. This initial launch for ULA's Vulcan rocket serves as a pivotal milestone for the company, particularly as it progresses toward the crucial missions within the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program. Vulcan is mandated to complete two certification flights before undertaking its inaugural NSSL mission, following the Peregrine flight, which fulfills the requirement. For CERT-1, ULA aims to conduct the CERT-2 mission by launching Sierra Space's Dream Chasers space plane to the International Space Station. Keller mentioned a 60-day period set aside for comprehensive data review post-CERT-1 launch, ensuring preparedness for subsequent stages. They anticipate scheduling the CERT-2 mission for around April, coinciding with another ULA mission to the ISS, the launch of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft for the crew flight test, where their both missions will occur within the same month remains uncertain. As ULA sets its ambitious schedule for the coming years, the promise of increased launch rates and evolving capabilities stands at the forefront of their plans. With multiple missions lined up and the prospect of heightened productivity, what pivotal milestones that advancements do you anticipate for ULA's future endeavors? How might this surge in launch rates influence the landscape of commercial space missions in the near future? Next year, the rate increases to a total of 28 launches for the year, once said. We're also putting in place a secondary capability where we can do vertical integration of a second vehicle in parallel, and once that capability is brought on board, our flight rate will increase. As we conclude our glimpse into ULA's ambitious plans for the upcoming year and beyond the trajectory of their launch schedule invites contemplation. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.